best entertainment on the earth. Tune in for Comics with Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch, and uh, I said I was going to do this, so I went, looked it up, bought the book, uh, downloaded it, checked it out, and um, it's time to talk about Dick Fight Island. So, you know, just, if, hey, if you're listening with kids or everything else, um, I, I'm just throwing this out there. There'll probably be some some salty language <laughs> in this review as we talk about what this comic is, because unlike a lot of Western comics, uh, Dick Fight Island is exactly uh, what it says it is. It is. It, it, it is not false advertising. Um, fundamentally, it's as, it's as honest a title as you can possibly get for a comic. Uh, there is an island, technically islands. So if you're being truly honest, you could call it Dick Fight Islands. But there's a island, um, and there is a uh, Dick Fight. There is a tournament of fighting, um, fighting with dicks. Um. It is, uh, so what, what, what makes this book special? Well, starting from kind of the, uh, the bottom to the front, which is not a metaphor for anything. So Dick Fight Island is, it, it, well, okay. <laughs> this comic, this manga was originally published by uh, Libre uh, back in 2019. And then it got re-released in uh, Sublime. That's Sublime with a capital BL for boy love which is a boys love imprint of Viz Media. This is classic uh, Yaoi uh, style manga. And uh, then, and it really it picked up attention, of course, when um, Viz took hold and, and started to produce it further on uh, May 11th of 2021. Um, it, uh, it, it started to pick up a lot of steam. Now here we are in 2022 and Dick Fight Island, as it turns out, is one of the top-selling graphic novels that Amazon currently has going. When I say graphic novels, I mean all graphic novels, not just manga. Um, I'm I'm saying it uh, it's outselling Watchmen, it's outselling House of M, anything going on in the uh, Krakoa, uh, Dawn of X, Reign of X kind of era, any of that kind of stuff. It's outselling all that. Secret Wars outselling it. The only uh, graphic novel as of this moment that's outselling it is Batman Year One, which is being heavily promoted in you know connection with the Batman movie. And even then, it's pretty close. But it's selling quite well. Now, there's certainly manga that's selling better. Uh, Berserk, Spy Family. Uh, Spy Family is just doing incredibly well uh, right now on, on manga. If you look at like the top 10, it is pretty much all Berserk and Spy Family, mostly Spy Family. Uh, but then other things you hear more about, uh, Jujutsu Kaitsen, the... Um, my Hero Academia, you know, my favorite One Piece, Demon Slayer. I mean, certainly those are doing very well. But Dick Fight Island is is hanging in there. No, no pun intended. Um, it is uh, one of the. It did, did hit number one for romance romance manga, and these aren't small sales. Um, it is highly likely that when all is said and done, Dick Fight Island will outsell everything that the big two uh, managed to put out this year. And it is the it is an absolutely queer centric book. So what is Dick Fight Island about? Well, fundamentally, it's set in a fiction island archipelago um, where there's a competition every four years to decide a new king. And the competition basically is a tournament among the champions of each tribe or each clan. Um, and there's eight of them. And the, the basic premise is uh, don't orgasm. If you, the person who orgasms last wins. So as a, the, the goal is these, these, uh, these fighters come into the, the, the Coliseum, into the arena, and they try and get uh, their opponent off. And if they get their opponent off, then you know, they're, they win and they advance to the next round. Now, interestingly enough, and I'll just point this out as a slight you know, plot hole, no pun intended with this entire book, is that uh, generally um, the men wear clothes that leave their butts uh, exposed. And they do that because it, it states that they're a uh, proud, you know, proud manliness uh, is why they do this. Uh, but when one of the tournament fighters uh, basically has traveled overseas, uh, it's his uh, heart, he's been studying abroad and he, he discovers a new technique that he believes will help him win the tournament. And it's, it, 
I mean, to put it bluntly, it's uh, putting putting his finger up the ass of his opponent and getting them uh, manipulating the prostate to get them to come. So this is a, uh, a dramatic, game changing kind of special ability that uh, Hart brings back. But but in this in this manga, there's a bunch of um, exploration of uh, the different characters and of the of the different tribes. Uh, some of the characters, you know, two of them would like to move in together and get married. Um, but you know, they have to get tribe approval to do so or so they think so that that dynamic is going on. There's one tribe that is, uh, most of them are, are patriarchal society, but, uh, one is matriarchal and they have uh, champions there. Um, it is, it, it is, f- every character has a backstory and every character has a general plot reason for doing what they're doing. And that's kind of the unique aspect about Dick Fight Island when you compare it to, these are sentence words I never thought would come out of my mouth. When you compare it to other, uh, you know, queer m- comics that, uh, that you often see in, in the U S where, you know, the, the characters are kind of there to embrace, um, you know, their, their sexuality in Dick Fight Island, they, it feels like they've, they long since moved past that. They, they've not just embraced their sexuality. They have gone far beyond any of that. And, you know, this, this comic regularly features the characters, you know, fighting, talking, kissing, battling, uh, having sex with each other. It is, uh, it's, it's, it's all that you can imagine and more. Oh, I forgot to mention that part of their uh, costumes is that uh, are armor based and the armor basically protects their junk. So they put their armor over their manhood um, and then over time, it's become kind of ceremonial battle armor. So they put like little axe blades on the side of it or, uh, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll basically dress it up. So it looks like, um, I, I, I don't know. So it's, it's more of a trophy that they're carrying around. And that is, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's completely sexual. They, they hide nothing uh, in that regard. Um, it, but it does have a plot. And I think there's the, the the hidden mystery component that makes a title like Dick Fight Island so successful, and a lot of the LGBTQ efforts in the U.S. Uh, you know struggle is because they don't spend a lot of time talking about uh, trying to almost justify and and you know almost prove that these characters have a right to be gay. These these characters are absolutely gay. Don't give a shit about it happy with their lives going out battling dicks that's that's what they're doing and there is no they they bypass any of that awkward silliness that you often see in the u.s comics and instead it gives them more room to inject plot and character development crazy uh, all these different uh, components in dick fight island have very unique personalities they all have different things they're going for some have backstories um, and so they, they definitely delve into that and spend many pages going into that. And then they get back to, you know, these characters clashing swords, um, metaphorically and figuratively. It's, it's, it's a fun book. It's not for me, uh, but it's still fun. I mean, you, you read it and you can clearly understand, even if it's not something you enjoy, you can understand why it's successful. Um, it's, it looks like, uh, something where the, the creator was trying to have fun with the premise, but also trying to put some effort into it. It spends a lot of time on subplots and, you know, the kind of political, a- a- you know, aspects of these characters fighting and what it means when they, uh, when they do certain things. I mean, it's just, it's, you know, but, but at the end of the day, it's also a lot of panels of guys jerking themselves off that, that is absolutely uh, what is going on in this book? Um, anyway, it's it's a hell of a thing. The other thing, though, just as an aside, is that uh, I, I do always have to laugh when uh, they have the little censorship bars over the junk. So you'll, they'll basically they'll have the entire you know penis there on the page, and then they'll put like a tiny black bar that covers like a tiny bit of the shaft. But but it's clear. I mean, it it does nothing. So it's it's comical how this all is, uh, is, is going. But anyway, um, it, it, it's a, it's a crazy, it's a crazy thing. You, it is definitely, definitely a queer centered, uh, manga. Um, but it's one that's massively popular. So next time that you get into an argument with somebody, uh, you can point out to them that, uh, you know, Dick fight Island is currently outselling Batman. 
and and, and, and well, technically, Batman Year One still doing better, but uh, monthly Batman comics, absolutely, these aren't apples to apples. And no, you shouldn't be getting into arguments just by the sake of manga is better than Western books. That's a pointless, stupid argument anyway. But I think that uh, I, I, anyway, it, it's it. There is a clear, clear message here. Hey, if you put in some action, you put in some background, you put in some plot, you put in some story development, you invest in these characters, you can have several volumes of Dick Fight Island. And there are several volumes. I believe this thing is still going. And it is, um, yeah, it, it's it, it's going crazy. I mean, nuts. I mean, no, not nuts. You, you know what I mean. Thanks for listening.